the presence of the ANC Regional Secretary, Comrade Teleswam Kweba, and the ANC Treasurer, Comrade TK Ngeza. I want to also lastly acknowledge the presence of the former mayor, Comrade Tumankosi, who we've been told is present here. The leadership of the SACP, the leadership of Sanko, Babos, Kosana, uh, the leadership of Kosatu, Comrade Begin Chalinchai. I've been told that as the first speaker, I shall not say protocol observed. The next speaker will, will acknowledge me as well and say all protocol observed. We are gathered here to commemorate, to honor, and to celebrate the life of a Messiah, a family loving man who lived his life unfortunately, running from the apartheid government, living like a fugitive a selfless instrument in the hands of the Congress movement and a giant whose blood nourished the tree of freedom for the cause of our total liberation. We are gathered here at the gravesite of Martin Hani as an annual pil pilgrimage because through this painful journey that we walk each year on, on this date, we find renewal, we find rejuvenation, we find restoration, and we uncover the true mastery of courage as we connect ourselves to his life of service and sacrifice, which inspires us to work with dignity for the people of South Africa. The memory of Christiane must not only live in archives, it must not only be found in libraries. It must not only be found in books written by his biographers and commentators, but his memory and resilient spirit must be inculcated into the minds and hearts of our people from the, from the first day they start from the, from the elementary school up until graduation. Ourselves who are beneficiaries of his work, let us live more worthy of his sacrifice. Those privileged to find themselves in public office, let us emulate him by, by becoming tools and instruments in the hands of the people, because that is what Krisani was, and that is what Krisani continues to be. We who remain because of the nobility of his work and his righteousness of Christian's intent to totally liberate our people from draconian laws, from landlessness, and from poverty and starvation, we must become the hope of the future, the strength of the present, and the sum of all generations that have come before us. In honor of Christiani, the city of Ekuruleni, as the chief of staff was unapologetic. We are unapologetic about ensuring that the expropriation of land for the benefit of our people, because Chris Hani was unambiguous about it, about the expropriation of land without compensation. Chris Hani was ambiguous about education being the cornerstone of our revolution. And as the city, we will not tire to seek partner, partnership and to continue persuading government to build a university named after Krisani here in Egorulen. The city of Egoruleni, the city of the chief of staff where he, ple where he sleeps, wants to welcome all of yourselves. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, you ver thank you very much, MMC. Uh, MMC Media. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, may I take this opportunity and call to the podium our Honorable Executive Mayor, the Mayor of the City of Ekuruleni, the City of Peace, the home of Eretropolis. Uh, we're calling upon you, uh, Executive Mayor, to come to the podium and address us.
Thank you. Thank you very much, comrades. Thank you. Thank you very much, comrades. Let me take this opportunity and greet the program director, Madam Speaker of Council, Ma'am Patricia Kumalo. Greet the Hani family as led by Uma Mudimpo and our little sister Olindiwe. Greet um, the Minister uh, of Arts and Culture, Minister Natim Tetwa. Greet the Tambo and Ngobi family. Greet the leadership of the SACP as led by Comrade Leighton Zimande, who is also a Minister of Transport. Greet the leadership of Sanko, Comrade Skosane, the, com the leadership of Kosatu as led by Comrade Njalinjali. Greet the head of the elections, uh, Mr. Fio Fokol, Figile Mbalula, the Chief Whip of Council, members of the Mayoral Committee and the delegation from the Eastern Cape. Former Mayor, our mentor, Comrade Dumankosi. Once again, we, are, we, are, we, have turned into, we have returned into this resting place of our beloved leader, Commander Chris Hani. Exactly 25 years ago, the forces of reaction prematurely ended his life in what they had calculated to be a drive towards a civil war in our country. Since that fateful minute on the 10th of April 1993, the democratic forces of South Africa have maintained the momentum to honor the memory of Commander Chris Hani by pursuing the cause of justice and peace, truth, truth and reconciliation. We, this we have done as a struggle to build a truly non-racial, non-sexist, democratic and prosperous South Africa in which the historically oppressed African majority must enjoy access to economic and social justice. But today, we return to, to this resting, resting place of Comrade Chris Hani with a bleeding heart. We carry with us a heaviness of the loss of the mother of the nation, Umama Uini Matigizela Mandela, whose historic meaning to the struggle and the masses of our country is closely tied to that of Com Comrade Chris Hani, but equally tied to the people of Eguruleni, as we know the contribution that he has made here in the area of Fegur Lane, in particular around Togoza Polar Park, and the contribution that she made to make sure that there is peace during violence in our area here in Fegur Lane. Today we have come to remember Chris Hani, just as we mourn the passing of another political personality who inspired the similar spirit of defiance and resilience amongst the youth of our country during the deadly days of apartheid repression. The curtain of history is closing down on the generation of the principal militant and uncompromising leaders of our people. In life, they save as a, re a recognizable and re a relatable symbols of resistance who stared at the enemy straight in their eyes, reminding him that evil shall never triumph over the determine, determ determination of our people. It was the passion and courage of the likes of Comrade Chris Hani and Mama Winima Tigizela Mandela that convinced the young people of our townships uh, that fear was a prison from which all we have to break free and the freedom is a, is a sacred right that no one must, must uh, ever give up, must never give up, even when we're threatened with, de with death. 25 years since the passing of Com Comrade Chris Hani, and as we mourn the passing of Mama Winnie Mandela, our country still battles with a system of racism. We have witnessed the recent years of the resurgence of overt racism with numerous incidences of racial attacks by unrepentant racists on the black uh, Africans. This was crowned by the conviction and the, the sentencing of, of two years imprisonment of one Miss uh, Vicky Mombek for racist remarks discharged against members of the South African Police Services. This renewed confidence within the racist establishment in our country is a proof that the struggle must continue. South Africa needs a more Chris Hani and more Mama Winnie Matigizela Mandela. We need to produce more community leaders with enough courage and moral fortitude to confront racist and racism and mobilize all freedom-loving people of South Africa on the platform of anti-racism, human equality, social justice, and radical economic transformation as an important pillars of our democratic and cohesive South Africa. 
in order to produce more citizens and leaders in the mold of Chris Hani and, other, and others of his time, such as Mama Winnie Mandela. We have, to, we, we have to struggle very hard against forgetting. As, we, as government, political parties and other organs of civil society have a responsibility to preserve South African history and tell it the way it is. Our canon of memory must, must be kept alive, free of distortions, and, and must be handed down to younger generation as part of the process of grooming progressive national consciousness and as a result also produce leaders of our country. As part of the canon of memory, the grave of Comrade Chris Hani, the memorial site and the work of remembrance were declared the national heritage in 2017. In 2018, the city of Egur um, under SREC submitted the nomination of Chris Hani's house, which we have purchased, um, to, uh, to be declared as a national heritage site. We have commenced with our work to build a family museum. And thank you, Mama Hani, for continuously sharing with us memories of Comrade Chris. And I'm sure that South Africans will be happy once we conclude this monument. So we must agree, comrades, that the month of April is the hero's month in South Africa. This is the same month where we lost Solomon Matlango, brutally hanged by apartheid government. It's the same month that we lost our long-serving president of the African National Congress, Comrade Oliver Reginald Tambo. It's the same month we've lost Mama Mandela and many other leaders of our revolution. We must work together to ensure that we preserve their memories, their legacy, and as a city of Egurleni, we are proud to have honored both Comrade Chris Hani as well as Mama uh, Dimpo Hani together with Mama Winnie Matigizela Mandela with the freedom of the city when the other two were still alive. We want to say uh, Comrade Chris Hani will forever be a free man of the city and we want to take this opportunity once again to thank the Communist Party, to thank the African National Congress and the Broader Alliance for having borrowed us one of the fearless uh, militant intellectual ever produced by our movement. Comrade Chris, who is the last one, Kumbula, and as a song is cut. Yamanda! Away Long live the undying spirit of Comrade Chris Hani. Long live! Long live the undying spirit of Mama Winnie Mandela. Long live. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Executive Mayor. We are now... Let's prepare ourselves. This event is about Comrade Chris Hani, a gallant freedom fighter, a fierce opponent of apartheid, the Chief of Staff of Umkonto Wesizwe, the General Secretary of the Communist Party, a husband to Osdimpo, and a father to his children. Comrade Chris Hani was assassinated on the 10th April 1993 here in Don Park. Allow me to call our daughter, Miss Lindy Wehani, uh, to come to, to the podium and address us. Tell us a revolutionary song.
Thank you. Thank you, comrades. Amanda. Long live the spirit of Chris Honey. Long live. Long live the spirit of Mama Winnie Mandela. Long live. Long live the spirit of O.R. Tambo. Long live. Good morning. I would like to acknowledge the executive mayor of Ekuhuleni, Mr. Mzwandile Masina, Minister Natim Tetwa, Secretary General of the SACP, Mr. Bladen Zimand, Head of the Elections, Mr. Fikile Mbalul, the Ekuhu, members of Ekuhuleni Municipality, the Tambo family, our friends and family, and everyone who made an effort to attend today's commemoration, all protocol observed. This has been a difficult and extremely sad week for all of us, but especially for the family of Mama Winnie Madiki Zela Mandela. My thoughts, love, and prayers are with them. It has not gone unnoticed by me that Daddy dies on Easter Saturday, or Mama Winnie dies on Easter Monday, or Tata O.R. died also at the end of April. I think and believe that Odedi is calling all his favorites during this time. So if I was the leaders, I would begin to pray. My father loved Mama Winnie, and she loved him as well. As a child coming to South Africa from Lesotho, um, we was, it was incredibly overwhelming. We didn't know what to expect. And there was some anxiety when our parents told us we would be staying with Mama Winnie and her family in Soweto. This was not a stranger's name. We grew up hearing about Umama Winnie, and you could hear the love and respect in my father's voice when he spoke about her. We would be shown images of her, and just like every single person, I was mesmerized by her beauty, but more especially by her strength. Her name would come up when Udedi would tell his girls that there is nothing we cannot do once we put our minds together, and that we are just as strong and powerful as boys, if not more so. And she would be illustrated as that example. Driving into Soweto and finding our way to Orlando, the knot in my stomach intensified. As we drove through the streets of history and turned the corners of promise, we reached Umama Winnie's house. I could not tell you what she was wearing that day, but I can tell you that I was wrapped up in the biggest embrace in her signature rasp, she told me, darling, call me Big Mommy. She proceeded to introduce my sisters and I to her grandchildren, who equally swept us up in welcome. This was a family used to enveloping people up in genuine love and affection. It felt like home, so much so that my late sister Kwezi broke protocol and acted the way my father used to say heathen-ish and began to believe she's a member of the family and fought with some of the grandkids. There have been so many things said about Umama we need this week that honestly I have found quite unpalatable. Whether it's in the media or leaders, even by those that feel they are defending her. Umama we need does not need defending. Her actions are the reason that I can stand here as an independent, strong and unapologetic black woman. Not only did she keep the home fires burning, she collected the wood and she lit that fire. She was fearless. Personally, I can't go to let her come Mama Winnie anymore. In Mama Winnie's words, I am not sorry. I will never be sorry. I will do everything I did again if I have to. Everything. And she has nothing to be sorry about. Last week, to participate and witness the beauty of social media with the hashtag I am Winnie Mandela was monumental. South African women were donning black with a duke was such an inspirational movement that reminded me that together we are strong. That together as women standing together, anything is possible. That Umama did not die, but she did multiply. I am Winnie Mandela. My daughter is Winnie Mandela. And all the little girls who dream big are Winnie Mandela. It might be a system that is old as time and ingrained in our society, but as sure as I'm Lindua Hani, the daughter of Tembi Sile, Chris Hani, patriarchy, we are coming for you. Watinta Bafazi, Watinta Mbogoto. 
apartheid, apartheid was not kind, and I'm putting it mildly. And we are told every day how we need to get over it. As I stand a few feet from my father's grave, I am very clear that I'll never get over it. And to those people saying that, I, to those people saying that, saying that particular thing, we should get over it. I think they need to exercise a whole lot of empathy, sensitivity, and just take a step off that pedestal of privilege to acknowledge and accept what we went through. Moreover, they should never get over it. It was the darkest time of this country, and the healing, working through it, should be a collective effort, and not just one for the previously, and a lot of people still currently oppressed of this country. It is our painful collective history. We must own it, embrace it, and work through it. I think forgiveness and reconciliation was thrust upon us before we were ready. I am yet to recollect the apartheid government as a whole apologizing for those atrocities. I find it is difficult to forgive something that even the perpetrators have not even acknowledged. I look at what is happening in our society today and the rampant racism that we are still to tackle. I don't think we should necessarily be where we are. And to have our children, who are not even born during apartheid, to feel the way they do, tells me we have our work cut out for us. The hatred is real in our world, and we cannot ignore it anymore. It has been 25 years since Dedi was brutally assassinated in his driveway. And to some, including myself, it feels like yesterday. Our family still miss him every day, and we will forever reflect on how our lives would have been different if he was still alive a sentiment I know shared by many. Honestly, I will never know, but I do feel I tend to miss the leadership I grew up surrounded by. The pure selflessness, selflessness of our Hanis, of our tumbles that they displayed. The concept of the cause being larger than the individual. We were fed this simultaneously as we were told, or if you like, indoctrinated, that our blood is black, green, and yellow. 25 years later, we seem to have forgotten those basics. We need, and myself included, to stop looking for saviors and realize that we all carry the gene of superb leadership. We are surrounded by greatness and inspiration. From the women who take menial jobs to feed her family to the young children still walking many kilometers to get an education, we are the ones to lead our beautiful country to the kind of future we want to see. This past year, I have publicly shared my story and opened up mine and my family's lives. I have shared my demons, pain, and joy, and how it has felt to grow up as Chris Honey's daughter. I am beyond humbled at the love and acceptance I have received, and I want to thank the South African people from all walks of life who have embraced me with no judgment. I often tell the story of how when people first realize I'm Chris Honey's daughter, the first thing they share with me is where they were on the 10th of April, 1993. And in the past, I used to resent that, and as I felt that I always had to relive the most painful moment of my life. I now understand that it was never done with malice, but the people were letting me know that my pain is their pain, and that I am not alone. That is the beauty and the graciousness of our people. You guys have carried us, the Honey family, on your shoulders in your hearts and in your prayers for 25 years. I am here today because of that overwhelming support. We love you and we thank you always, South Africans. May God bless South Africa. May God bless her leaders and keep her strong. Long live the spirit of Chris Honey, long live. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Comrade Lindy Wei, uh, for inspirational message coming from the Ani family. I am now going to call the following comrades to come and give messages of support. MKMVA, Comrade Kebi Mapatwe. Is he here? If he so, oh, oh, okay. 
Then I will call upon a representative from Senko. I was told that, uh, and then it will be Kosatu, SACP, and another message of support from the ANC represented by Comrade Kili Lembalula. Manja Viva ANC Viva Viva SACP Viva Viva Cosato Viva Viva Sanko Viva Program Director Patricia Thank you very much Made in Pohani and the little daughter Lindy. Comrade General Secretary of the Communist Party, Mpepetua, Indotiawa Tambuz, Comrade Pegin Chalin Chali. Comrade Figile and the entire leadership of the African National Congress present here. Sanko leadership in this province and also in this region. Nyambos, the leadership of the Hulmen. Perpetua. Those were some live visuals from the 25th uh, assassination commemoration of Chris Hani coming from the city of Ekuruluni. We had a ceremony.